Matters pertaining to grief and loss. Tools and resources for hope amidst suffering. Biblical principles to shed light in the darkness. This is the Grief Speak Podcast. Welcome to the eighth episode of the Grief Speak Podcast. This is Jacob and Corey, and this is the first of 10 episodes that will correspond, correlate with um, my new book, Battles in the Promised Land. Uh, the subtitle is Suffering, Hope, and the Abundant Christian Life. So it was, it came out just this past month, and um, we want to give you a little insight, uh, whether you've read it or not, you'll um, here's some different takes, but we're we're not following it chapter by chapter, but hitting some of the key themes found within Battles in the Promised Land. Um, and so we do encourage you to get it. You can find it anywhere you, you buy books, um, Amazon. You can, if you get um, on my personal website, if you go to battlesinthepromisedland.com, you can purchase a signed copy. Um, and we would love to get it in your hands or for you to get it to someone you know who is grieving or suffering or um, going through hardships of life, which is most people. Mm. And so the first topic um, we are going to cover, and it's found really in the first chapter of Battles in the Promised Land, is the topic of surrender. Surrender. Um, here's a little background of of what how the book came about, um, I was teaching through, I was preaching uh, through the book of Joshua, not verse by verse through, but I was doing one sermon on the whole book of Joshua. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, this, the realization came to me through that. When, when you, you have to take a bird's eye view when you do something like that. But the realization came to me, there are battles in the promised land. That's what the whole book of Joshua is. It's one battle after another. And as you dig into studying what the promised land signifies, uh, it's not heaven like the old, uh, some of the hymns would say. There, there's no battles in heaven, first mm-hmm. off. Uh, there's no suffering. There's no hardship. There's no war. There's no, none of that. Right. Um, but it signifies the abundant Christian life. Mm. And so realizing, oh, wow, there's battles in the promised land. That. That is life. Mm-hmm. Even amidst abundance of life in Christ, there's one battle after another. It's, we're not promised an easy road, but we are promised that God is with us. Right. And so uh, I have just started <laughs> ever since. That was probably, uh, it was over a decade ago. And um, I've started seeing so much of the Bible through that lens now. Um, having gone through the, the loss of my sister mm. and just seeing it in my own life, how in different ways, God has enriched my life. Uh, as hard as that is to say, it, it is a very biblical thing to say, though. Mm. I mean, Paul rejoices in his sufferings because he knows it's producing right. things in him. And um, and so you, you, you have to get to the topic. You have to get to the point, though, uh, to be able to benefit from your grief, from your suffering. You have to get to the point of surrender. That's it. And so what we see with Joshua before he gets to the promised land, I think he had already come to that place of surrender. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joshua, he's been with Moses from the time of Egypt. He firsthand experienced the plagues, God's power, um, the Passover, the flight from Egypt, the parting of the Red Sea, the destruction of the enemies. Um, Joshua was there on Mount Sinai. He mm-hmm. went part of the way up with Moses. Uh, we tend to pass over that. Um, he was right there with them, seeing God's splendor more than anybody. Mm. Uh, and then they get to the promised land right on the edge, and they send the spies in, and Joshua's one of two, him and Caleb, that mm. come back with a good report. Yeah, Man, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm. Oh, everything you can imagine, everything you could ever need is there. Mm. And And they knew God was with them, and they're like, we can take this land. Now, there's, there's enemies, there's giants in the land. The other people, the ten, were afraid, saying, no, we can't do this. Mm-hmm. But Joshua and Caleb trusted God right. and said, we can. But you know the story. The, the Israelites said, no, we're, we're not going to do it. So they wandered in the wilderness 40 years, not obtaining the abundance of life that was available to them in the promised land, land flowing with milk and honey. And so Joshua was there, but mm-hmm. Joshua saw God's provision even in their wanderings. 
manna, their clothes, their shoes didn't wear out in 40 years. And um, those people died off. And here Joshua is uh, about to enter the promised land. Finally, after all of these years, um, I think he was already surrendered at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, just he wasn't in control. He mm-hmm. knew they could take the land, and here that he is forty years later. Yeah, there's a lot of change that has happened in sure. his heart. A lot of surrender sure. had to have happened, or he would have been like one of them that had perished before entering the land. Right. And in Joshua one two through five, we see this. It says Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Then he says this, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Mm -hmm. I love that yes. promise. That's one promise that is found throughout Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament alike. And, and I think Joshua was ready to lead at that point because he had first learned to follow. Mm. You don't follow if you don't surrender. Right. That's right. And, and um, he was ready to lead at that point mm. because he knew 40 years ago, he knew now more than ever that God was with him. That's right. Uh, and so... We, too, if we want that abundance of life, even amidst our hardship, suffering, we, too, have to get to that place where we throw up our hands, wave the white flag, and and surrender. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, when you stop thinking about Joshua even taking the role, I mean, that was an act of surrender in itself, that him being, you know, God making it clear that he's the next guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And... And God reminded him multiple times that he was the guy, you yeah, know. Yeah. But it, but he showed he surrendered by, by the actions he took, yeah. you know. And so, surrender is such a huge thing. And in in the context of even this podcast with grief, um, surrender is so important in our life. Um, we cannot function properly as Christians, and in our walk with God, no matter what we're facing, mm-hmm. without surrender. Yeah. Um, you know, every time we try to take control of any situation, we always will go the wrong way. Right. If we're not surrendered to the Lord through it. Right. And so, yeah, surrender is such a key thing. If any, if honestly, it's the very first thing of, of all of our life. Absolutely. We have to surrender to Christ. Yeah. Um, That's right. In order to um, be led by the Spirit, in order to be forgiven, in order to be able to trust, to be transformed from uh, the inside out and re- renewal of our minds, it all it all starts with that surrender. Yeah. I mean, we even, we talk about repentance. Mm-hmm. Repentance is a surrender. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, and it's not a one-time event. Right. That's where we, we get off track at times. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's a daily thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So how do we surrender to God amidst our what we're going through, our suffering, our our grief, our uh, facing death and uncertainty and situations we don't like, we wouldn't have chosen, mm-hmm. we don't understand. How do we surrender amidst that? Mm-hmm. I I think you run to God. Yeah. You know? I mean the thing of it is is we naturally want to run to everything else. We want to self-medicate. Mm-hmm. We want to do whatever feels right in the moment. Mm-hmm. But the truth of it is, is none of those things will help us. Yeah, And it, we have to surrender against even sometimes our gut reaction. Mm-hmm. And that's going to the Lord. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, I think as a Christian, it should become a natural reaction for us to turn to God in everything, right. even though it's not always the case. Because as we draw closer to Christ and we in His Word, we'll know that He's constantly telling us to follow Him. Right. He's constantly calling us to surrender. Oh, Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross 
Daily. Daily, yeah. And follow me. Yeah, yeah, that's in Luke's gospel. Yeah. And so that's an act of surrender. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and why would we surrender? Well, because he's God. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, he obviously, um, he not only knows the entire circumstances, he not only is the one who has all the resources we need, mm-hmm. but he's also the one in charge. Yeah. I mean, he's the one that this is by no accident. Mm-hmm. And so what we're, what we're going through, whatever it is, whatever hardship, whatever suffering, whatever grief, God is using that. Mm-hmm. And that is... Here's the thing. Yeah. If we let him. If we let him. That's That's, right. that's the surrender. Yeah. Um, God wants to use. Absolutely. Grief. Uh, don't... I want to encourage you, listener, don't fight against the work that God is seeking to do in you and through you right. amidst your grief. Surrender to him amidst mm-hmm. it. I think of the Apostle Paul. He modeled that better than anybody I mean, there was part of his calling on his life was how much um, he must suffer for the sake of of Christ, um, and he he had said things like, "I've learned in every situation to be content, yeah, whether I have plenty or or not, or if I lack, if right. um, he he has that long list of all the sufferings he went through, but yeah, uh, he was surrendered, to- and the Lord reminded him in yeah. like Second Corinthians, I think. It's where the Lord said, you know, my grace is sufficient. Yeah. You know, that. Yeah. so just because God hasn't taken us out of it doesn't mean God isn't going to use us through yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I think of, there's one uh, theodicy. Uh, a theodicy is a explanation of, of how God and, and evil and suffering can coexist. Right. And one explanation is, uh, is popularized by a man named John Hick, but it's called the soul-making theodicy. And if you think about it, the character traits that we hold up as the the good character traits you want, just about all of them are produced. You can't have them instantaneously. Hmm. They're all produced through some situation. Right. Like take uh, patience, for example. Hmm. Uh, how do you obtain patience? Well, <laughs> you have to <laughs> have to wait through something or, or perseverance or right. endurance. You have to endure through something. It's not – these character traits don't come instantaneously. Part of having them is the process through which you obtain them. That's right. And so I, I think that's a very biblical theodicy because um, I think of like the Apostle Paul. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you can rejoice in your sufferings right? because – God is producing character and and essentially hope yeah, that's right. <laughs> in us. He so surrendering amidst our grief is letting God do the work He wants to do in us. Mm-hmm. Not fighting against Him. Not fighting against the pain. Right. When I told one friend who lost his dad, it's like, what do I do? And I just said, let it hurt. Yes. Let it hurt. That's right. And God's. Trust God. Mm-hmm. And let it hurt. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's yeah. Let God answer those tough questions. Yeah. You know? And um, and even if he doesn't. That's right. Surrender to him and That's say, right. I, I don't understand this, God, but I know that you do. Right. And I'm okay with that. That's right. There's surrender in that. Absolutely. It's, yeah. And so whatever you're going through, I, I don't know what it may be, but I know there are battles in the promised land for mm-hmm. you, uh, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's work troubles, it's relationships with some family members, what, whatever it may be, whatever battle you may be facing, I, I want to encourage you to surrender to God and let him work in you and through you amidst uh, the the sufferings that you're going through. In 2 Corinthians 1, five, it says, for as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly and comfort too. I want to read you the very end of chapter one of Battles in the Promised Land as we close. It says, just like Joshua, our hardship and suffering has a purpose. Through it, we see God's grace, provision, and fighting on our behalf. We learn of his goodness and trustworthiness in ways we wouldn't have known otherwise. And we become more like him in our character and compassion towards others who are also suffering. That's what gives us hope. Hope to get through it. Hope to keep living. Hope to trust God's ways and follow his lead no matter what. We may not see it now, but God is working the small, hard, everyday trials into something bigger for us. 
often preparing and qualifying us to be used in mighty ways for him. May you trust him amidst your suffering, and may you see his mighty hand prevail in the abundant, hope-filled life he has promised to those who follow him. Will you surrender to him and allow him to use your suffering for good today? Amen.